Hello, and welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin English, founder of The Silver Edge. Our mission at The Silver Edge is to inspire men and women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond to live their strongest, healthiest, most fulfilling lives. In this podcast, we share stories of amazing individuals who are doing just that to help motivate you to become the healthiest version of yourself, regardless of your age. And now, on to today's podcast. Hello, my guest today is Twyla Kine. Twyla is a 63-year-old IFBB figure pro, an avid golfer, a certified yoga teacher, a lawyer, as well as an A-certified personal trainer. Twyla, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm glad you're here, and we certainly want to dig into your fitness story, but why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your childhood? Were you active as a girl? Were you uh, in sports? Well, I was born and raised in a uh, Midwest uh, town in North Dakota, a very small town, and uh, there really wasn't much you do back in the 1950s and 60s, <laughs> so we really just resorted to being outside and and, uh, you know, playing sports. And so my first sport, I think, was probably water skiing. My father was, uh, you know, he had a boat and we went to a lake and I probably started water skiing at seven, you know, pretty early. And then it just, um, you know, kept going. I mean, when I was in about sixth grade, I found out I was, oh, I made this presidential physical fitness team. I could outrun the boys, really pretty much outdo all the boys. And then I was asked to join the high school track team as a sixth grader. And so I did that. And, and then um, three years in a row, my sophomore, junior and senior year, I was the state champion in, in the hurdles. And then also the 400 meters. I was the first girl to go under one minute in the 400. It was actually the 440 yard dash. Um, so I played softball in high school, basketball and track and field. That's the only thing we had available, you know, before title nine was passed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went to, uh, you know, and I was, you know, just excelled in all of my sports because it was a small town and, you know, I weren't with that many people. But then I got a scholarship to go to college and I played basketball and I started gymnastics when I was like 18. And so I was named the female athlete of the year in my college in 1978, I think it was. And then I had started running um, and I continued my running into, I did some marathons and half marathons. And then, you know, in the early eighties, I kind of got a little sick of running, but I just felt a little pressure and I actually qualified to go to the Boston marathon in 1981. And I lived in, again, still lived in North Dakota. I was married and I didn't know how I was going to train for this Boston marathon in the middle of winter. And so I, I found a way I just dressed up really warm with, parkas and hats and boots and I would run south because in North Dakota the wind is from the north and then yeah. I said to my husband you know pick me up you know at this town <laughs> at this time <laughs> anyway so then I did the Boston Marathon in 1982 and then after that I just quit running and I said it's just torturous and I said there's other stuff to do so then I started you know teaching you fitness classes and oh and then backing up a little bit when I first was married, when I was about 21, I bought my first set of weights from the J.C. Penney's catalog. I got a bar and, you know, six plates and I started lifting weights, um, you know, really early before they were even in. And then um, so then when I started uh, teaching aerobics and things like that in the mid 80s, I joined my first gym and it was an all women's gym. And I learned the Nautilus and I you know started working there and and I taught all the different fitness classes you could think of, you know, high and low and step and slide and spin and all that through the years. And then of course I was in a second marriage at that time. And, and then he encouraged me uh, as he was going through his residency and in, in radiology, he said, you know, just go to school, get something different. And so I went to law school when I was 40. And so then I kind of took a, I did I wasn't really that active. I still was, you know, lifted weights and, you know, taught a few classes and, and then, um, I kind of just focused on that intellectual part of my life for a while. And then, uh, we moved back to North Dakota after several different job changes for my husband. And then when I was in North Dakota, 
uh, Fargo, North Dakota, I met some girls who were uh, doing these uh, competitions. And I said, what is this all about? Of course, I didn't know anything about it. And I learned more about it. And then finally, in um, I think it was 2011, I went to see my first show competition. And right then and there, I said, this is something I have to do. Because I was always, you know, pretty athletic and, and I was always in great shape. I mean, I wasn't that muscular, but I started lifting weights quite a bit more then. And I did my show, my first show in 2012, I was 55. And uh, it was very stressful, my first one. Mm-hmm. T- tell us a little bit about that first show, because um, I'm not sure everybody listening knows exactly what you mean by first show. So this is a bodybuilding show. Tell us kind of what that first show was like, what you're what you're actually doing to prepare for that. Talk us through a little bit about what what that first show was like and what it felt like for you. Well, I when I went to the show, there were uh, different categories so, or divisions. So there's bodybuilding and then um figure and then bikini. That's what all they had for the girls back then. And so I didn't really think I wanted to do figure because I thought, oh, they're just standing around and doing these little, you know, figure poses. And I really wanted to do the bodybuilding. But of course, I've always been small my entire life, born small, grew up small, skinny. And I'm, my mom is thin. <laughs> I'm just, I have no potential to be very big. But so then that year, there was a new uh, division coming out called physique. And it was wide open. Nobody knew what was going to go on. And so I did that in my first show. And so then I could do all the fun poses and routines. And it was great. And um, I hired a, a trainer. And we it was a virtual online one. And we just went through my diet and things like that. And I and she said, you know, you can't do any cardio, Twyla. Just don't do any cardio, cardio for, you know, four months. So you're never going to keep any muscle on. So, of course, I didn't do any cardio. And I put on maybe you know, five pounds and five months, something like that to get ready for the show. And, and I looked really good. I thought when I went into physique and when I was 55 and I had, you know, a couple of young girls against me and I, you know, I got second and I said, I was going to just do one. And of course I thought, Oh no, I got to do another one now, but my diet, you know, it really wasn't that bad back then. She didn't have me be real strict. It was just pretty much eat real food and, you know, get rid of the junk and things like that. And then we had to go through that one week of where you flatten out and, you know, I'm not really sure what it's called anymore. I didn't really do it later on, but I had to get flat and reduce all my carbs and then carb up again. And so I did that. And I don't think I did much cardio at all to prep for that show. And uh, so then I did my second show a few months later and I did crossed over. I did physique and figure and the judges in their comments said, stick with figure. So I did. And then by then, you know, everybody was, physique was getting more and more popular. And we could see that it was, you know, for bigger girls. So um, then my second and third shows were, you know, just kind of winged it. I didn't really hire anybody. I kind of did it myself. And then I started learning about this Masters National show in Pittsburgh and my suit maker told me about it. And so then I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this the next year. So then I finally got ready to go out to, to Pittsburgh and I competed in that one. And I mean, every show you learn more and more. And and, uh, and then I didn't really hire a serious trainer. I just kind of did it on my own. And I didn't look that great, but I still got you know third because the women, you know, when you get over 55, it's kind of hard to hold it together. I mean, for most women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, but now it's more, more, it's become more common. And so then after I did my first national show, then I said, okay, well, I'm going to quit now because I did my first national show. But then some of the local shows started having higher age groups. I mean, cause in the past it was, you know, open and they didn't have anything above uh, or above 45 or 35. So then I went to a show where they had a 50 and I went in and I, you know, won that one. And then I went to another show and I, it was like, 55 or 50 and 40 and I won those and then I decided to go to the Masters Nationals again and then I hired this guy out of California and he's, he's, he's he has a, this body bio you might have heard of him Kim Odo so I, I used him uh, for actually an off season to kind of grow and then I used him for my contest contest prep and he could see that I was just different than a lot of the girls I 
didn't have to do any cardio. I stayed naturally lean for some reason. I ate a ton of food. It was just massive amounts, like over 3000 calories a day. And it was six meals a day. And that was the, that was the off season. And then once we started the contest prep, you know, pretty much continued all that food, just kind of cut back a little bit here and there. And then maybe two, two or weeks or so before the show, I started doing some cardio just to cut a little bit. And then that year in the masters nationals, there were only three people in my class and I was the smallest girl, but I won because I had, you know, nice proportion. And I mean, I looked like a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of girls weren't looking like girls back then, but I still looked feminine and I, I thought it looked pretty good. And then I said, okay, I'm done now. I'm not going to do anything else. But then I got, and then I thought, okay, I'll do one more pro show because, you know, he had the Pittsburgh place had a, had a nice pro show for the masters. And so I did, and then I did that show and uh, let's see, that was, uh, what year was it? 2015. And then I got third in that show out of, I think six. And then I won some money, taxable income. <laughs> wow. Okay. They, they tax you. And then after that, I said, okay, I think I've had my fill of this because then, you know, the girls were getting so big and I just wasn't big enough. And I knew I was never going to be big. So I decided to retire then and I'm just been doing my thing for the last five years and I still follow a five day, you know, split lifting. And I just got back from a golf lesson. So I'm still golfing. Okay. I'm doing my yoga and uh, I'm just loving life. I mean, I have a good life. I'm very blessed. Well, you certainly, you look great. Um, and anybody listening to this should needs to go out and check you out on your Instagram. So you're obviously still in great shape. Sounds like you're, you've kept up with the, with the bodybuilding. You said you still have that kind of five day a, a week split routine. I saw one of your posts when you, you said every now and then, uh, I think about competing again, but then I remember how intense and time consuming all of that was. I, I suppose you're talking about probably that the prep for those shows. So can you talk us through a little bit about what your workout routine looks like now, that five day split and how that has or hasn't changed um, since you were preparing for competitive bodybuilding? Well, I think when I was competing, of course, um, my coach told, told me to try to stay in the hypertrophy range. So most of my, my rep schemes were, you know, 12, 10, 8, 12. And uh, so I did primarily that. And my husband was with me a lot and he helped me with forced reps and um, you know, just assist. So, and it was just very, very intense. And I thought, and I didn't sleep really well because I think I probably just overdid it. And so uh, now my routine is sort of the same. I try to get every body part, you know, once a week, meaning maybe a couple twice, but um, way, way less intense. And of course now I'm working out at home and I'm just doing mainly, you know, lower, lower weights, high reps and, you know, like body weight things. And, but before this all happened, I was in the gym still doing my two, two leg days a week. I'd have an emphasis on, you know, the quads. And then the second day would be more hamstring glute emphasis. And of course, you know, pull-ups are my thing. I love doing pull-ups. So that's my back and by day. Then I have um, the shoulders, uh, a separate day. And then chest and try, I probably do. That's the least important to me. So I do that one, maybe one day a week. And I do absolutely zero cardio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I do, I do HIIT maybe one a day a week. And maybe it's 15 minutes. But um, it just for some reason, I stay fairly, you know, fairly lean. I guess it's genetic. I, I, eat, a, I eat a very healthy diet. So, I mean, it's, you know, about 80% clean. But, um, yeah, so my, my lifting is... I mean, I can't wait to get back into the gym. I think it's going to be soon, but um, it's, it's uh, less intense, but kind of the kind of the same routine. Yeah, gotcha. And so, for folks listening to this in the future, we're recording this in April of 2020, and we're right in the middle of the COVID-19 madness here. So, of course, our our gyms are all all closed right now. So that's what Twyla's referring to, and I suppose we can't wait to get back into the gym. So this might be a good segue to talk a little bit about what you eat. 
so you alluded to this, what you, what you were eating, you know, in excess of 3000 calories, sound like what you need to do was more bulk and build that, that lean muscle than to diet and shred. Uh, but what were you eating say for contest prep back five, six, seven years ago when you were, when you were doing, uh, your contests, your shows, and how does that differ from how you're eating today? Well, they're pretty similar. Um, in the beginning, he had me eat six meals a day and, and it was very high carb, 300 grams of carb, 200 grams of, of uh, protein and, and high fat. I mean, it was high everything. Yeah. And I really did get sick of eating. It was just a lot. And, you know, and I couldn't have any meat. It was pretty much all chicken and turkey and eggs. And I got so sick of eating chicken and turkey and I don't even like it. So my last prep was kind of much better because I made 18 egg whites a day. Got my fry pan out, my 18 egg whites. I'd have like, you know, six in the morning, six for lunch, six for my snack. And then at night I would have, you know, chicken or something like that. But a lot of carbs, a lot of oats and uh, sweet potatoes, um, just mainly that. And um, just forever and ever and ever, day after day. And then once we got closer to contest prep, he, then I had to do a little cardio, but we still kept my calories, you know, fairly high. Carbs were still very high. I never, ever had to cut carbs, ever. Even mm -hmm. when I was out of, at my contest, it was have your rice, have your oats. I still had my carbs. I still had my fats. He let me have salmon. Um, I'm just a very unusual person. So, um, again, probably no, nobody wants to hear that, but I really think it's just genetics. For me, it was genetics. Um, and then, so now I pretty much had to have the same diet. I have a lot. I have my egg whites and my oats and, you know, I had more fruit in the morning and then, you know, lunch, I kind of little, probably less meat and, you know, more carbs and more plant-based things, but I probably eat about 80% clean. I don't have any, I have as little sugar as possible. Nothing really white. Like I don't eat white pasta white bread everything is pretty healthy nothing processed you now we, we my husband and i you know have pizza now and then we have you know burgers and fries now and then when we're out but um nothing too strict but um i think a lot of it is just you know it's pretty healthy eating i i don't i don't need any junk <laughs> yeah certainly just concentrating on whole foods and having a good macronutrient split that works for you is 80% of the battle, I think, for body composition. And obviously you have that quite dialed in. So what about supplements? Do you do you use protein powders and things like that? I do. And yeah. uh, I, I always have uh, used, done a couple of protein shakes when in my contest, in my off season I did. And then during contest prep, he made me eat more real meat because, you know, they just, a lot of these protein supplements just go right, you know, just in and out, at least for me. But now um, I probably have one big one every day and it's after my workout. So for me, it just makes sense to, you know, work your muscles as much as possible and then recover with a lot of good protein and then a banana. So that's been my routine for, I don't know, five years since I stopped. I just and if I would go away to a gym and I knew I had to, you know, do some errands, I would just pack my little cooler with my, my protein shake and my banana. And I just have always had that, but that's really, that's the only supplement. I know I take all the vitamins, you know, I, I you know, can think of D and C and all the good ones and zinc now, zinc and C is the big ones to take now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but for me, but I keep my protein levels very high. And I think, and the reason is, you know, I do a lot of reading on, you know, aging and anti-aging, and they say that the older you get, the less able you are to synthesize your protein. And so I do make sure that I have, I start out my day, you know, with my four eggs and a little cheese, and, and I make sure I have plenty of protein. But that's going to probably come to an end. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> the yeah. harder it is. Right, yeah. right. Well, that might be a good segue then. You talked a little bit about um, recovery. What do you do for for recovery? What are your thoughts on, um, obviously you have a very intense workout schedule. Uh, what do you do for recovery and how does sleep factor into that? Well, my recovery is basically, if I can, take a nap. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, uh, when, I was, when I was competing, 
you know, my coach said, take this glutamine and, you know, this is going to help you recover. But I said, I think a nap would work better. So, of course, now, even if you just rest for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, eyes closed, just let everything kind of cool down. That's what I do if I need it. But, um, but sleep is just an amazing thing, I think, and it's so underrated. And now more and more research is coming out about how important it is and, and the relationship between, you know, sleep and the brain and your gut. And uh, so I try to get at least eight to nine hours of sleep if I can. And I just love, love sleeping. And there's so many important, and that's another reason why I do HIIT, just go back, because as we get older, we need to repair and sleep and HIIT are the two things, plus intermittent fasting that produce growth hormone, natural growth hormone. And so that's the one reason why I do HIIT. And then, of course, the sleep is, you know, your natural growth hormone and repair. And so, um, and of course, well, I have tried intermittent fasting maybe one day a week. I might go from 6 o'clock at night until you know, maybe 10 the next morning or 11. That's the longest I've ever done it because they say that that helps with, you know, the growth hormone too, the longer you wait. But, of course, I just can't wait that long to eat. So. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got years of uh, of expect your body's expectation to be fed at, uh, six times a day. It might be a little tougher to to get into a fasting routine there. And then just for people listening that might not know what HIT or H I I T is, that's high uh, high interval intensity training, and typically that's just as opposed to going out for a thirty minute run. This would be a very short duration, but of a very explosive, intense effort. Um, so, what sort of HIT workouts do you like to do? Well, when I would go to the gym, I guess my main thing was I liked the treadmill and I would put it up to the highest elevation and do like 45 seconds of super high intent, uh, incline. And then I would kind of dig in with my heels. And, you know, so it was a lot more of a targeted uh, to get the hamstrings and the glutes activated. And I kind of equated it to um, I don't know how many people mow their lawn anymore, but I used to have to mow my lawn and I'd have to mow it up a hill. You know, and it was a mower that was not self-propelled. So think about that, pushing, you know, and digging in. So it was, and it was just, I would get my heart rate up to 150, 60. And so I would do, uh, you know, maybe 10 or, you know, or six or seven sessions of that. But of course, you know, you can do anything you want. It might be like at home here, I might just do, um, you know, push-ups and then go into, you know, some little pile squats or I mean, it's just anything. You can just make up anything you want to set the timer and go. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I do in the gym and at home, I just kind of wing it depending on what I feel like. And maybe I'll add, you know, chest is my least favorite. So I might do some chest things. And Okay. So talk to us a little bit. You're, you're obviously very active. You've got, it sounds like some yoga, some golf. How has the strength training background, how does that help you in other areas of your life? Well, I think the three things that I do primarily all help each other. Um, it, well, if you strength train, you're naturally going to probably lose some flexibility, which I found I did. And so the two kind of balance each other out. And then the two of them together just help my golf game immensely because you get this, you know, I'm so limber in the spine and, you know, um, and of course I'm strong. I mean, my drive, I can outdrive most men. My drive is, is quite, you know, far. I'm a long ball hitter. So I think it's just, um, they all really go together for me. They work for me. And, and, um, I just love all of them. I I don't know which one I could give up. (laughs) So, yeah, it sounds like you've been active your entire life then, as you you said, kind of as, as a girl, um, and starting early with the track and the basketball and taking up gymnastics at age 18 and excelling at pretty much everything you do. I saw on one of your Instagram posts, you have this, it's like a tennis ball challenge. You have a couple of them where you're working on your reflexes. Where did that come from? I started following this uh, young man on Instagram and it was just so fascinating to me. And here, okay, it started like my husband and I, we kind of, you know, kid around a lot and he'll throw like a sock at me and I'll just immediately catch it. And so I think um, I thought, oh, that's kind of, interesting how I can improve that. But as a personal trainer, you know, there are these five components of fitness that, you know, that you help people with and that's, you know, strength 
and then endurance and body composition and cardio and then um, flexibility. So that's the five. But then I thought, well, when I saw this hand-eye body guy, then I kind of started doing some research on these fitness skills. So things like mobility, you know, which is different than flexibility and then power and then, you know, coordination and then, you know, reaction time. And so the, I decided to just start doing some of those to kind of branch out from just regular physical fitness components. I wanted to be more mobile. I wanted to be, you know, you know, faster reflexes. I wanted to just branch out because, you know, I'm 63 and I've done it all. <laughs> but so he, uh, he was interesting and he, he um, caught my attention and I've, you know, probably done three, but some of them are hard, but that was fun. And then I do a lot of mobility things. Um, and there's just, you know, so much out there. I mean, there's just, there's not enough time to do everything that I want to do. Yeah. Right. So what's, what's next for you? It sounds like you've accomplished a lot. Do you have goals to, uh, in the fitness arena or at this time, at this point in your life, you said, you know what, I've pretty much checked all the boxes. I just want to be in shape and enjoy life. Well, you know, a couple of months ago, I don't know if you saw my post, but I met this gal up in Northern Arizona and she told me about a show that was going to be going on in California this year. So I did actually get the itch to compete again, but you know, that lasted a couple of weeks. Hmm. And um, so I think right now I don't have anything, you know, in the immediate future that might, that I have, that's a goal. I do want to keep improving my golf game. I think that's something I can keep doing you know, for another, you know, 10, 15 years. And I, uh, you know, I've always wanted to shoot under 90 and then I was consistently shooting under 90. And then I said, I really think I'd like to shoot under 80. And, and then a couple of days that happened, I was, I had a couple of 79s and I still made some dumb mistakes. So, I mean, I think that's where I'm at now. I want to maintain my fitness level as much as I can work on some of the fitness skills and, um, yeah, so just kind of, you know, cruise. Go on cruising mode. <laughs> nice. Well, I would encourage anybody who hasn't already to get on your get on your Instagram and take a look. And specifically, look for some of the um, the Flex Friday posts. Those are fabulous. You're you can you're a pull up machine. I think you already alluded to that. Some of those posts are amazing. You can obviously, like you said, you can hit the long ball. Um, so you've got a great Instagram. And you're obviously very inspirational to a lot of people. So that brings me to one of my closing questions here. What would you say to somebody who's maybe listening to this or who finds you on Instagram is um, a woman maybe in her 60s who maybe she was once active and just isn't anymore and is wanting to get back into the game to get fit? What would what advice would you have for somebody just starting out? Well, somebody in their 60s, wow, that would be... I'd, I'd probably have to say, you know, make sure if she gets clearance from her doctor that everything is okay. I mean, make sure she doesn't have anything, you know, any injuries that would affect her. But, you know, personal trainers are so important and find somebody that you feel comfortable with and, and start easy with them and do a lot of their own research. There's the internet is full of things. There's great books out there. I mean, I have so, you know, books that I've resorted to on you have a lagging muscle part, um, totally get up on educated about nutrition and, you know, experiment with what works for you and just really think about being motivated. Try to find ways to motivate yourself and try to get discipline, just establish a discipline, establish a pattern, a schedule, and don't stray from it. Do everything you can to stay on schedule and, you know, just motivation and, and discipline are, are the two things that you have to do with these women have to do it. You cannot rely on your trainer to have him do it for you or her do it for you. It's all comes within. And so think of it as a lifestyle change. Think of it as, uh, you know, looking fabulous for your husband, you know, for your kids, establishing, you know, being an inspiration for kids, maybe. So, I mean, it's, it's a, it would be a big commitment. I mean, but start, start with little things and, and see where it goes, but try not to get hurt. Try not to overdo it. But again, you know, you have to do enough. So there's a balance. I think that's, yeah, that's beautifully said, especially, I love that you throw discipline in with motivation. I, I think that a lot of people expect motivation to 
to drive them to incorporate these, you know, whether it's nutrition or training to drive this into their lifestyle. And motivation certainly is important, but it's just as important to have that discipline to stay on track for when you're not motivated to still get these things done and to stay on track. So uh, I think that's solid advice and obviously starting small and incorporating things into your new lifestyle certainly makes sense. Twilight, you you look fantastic and you're certainly an inspiration. Where would you like for folks to connect with you? Is Instagram the best or do you have other places for folks to go? I'm on Instagram only. That's, that's uh, Social media is, is kind of time consuming <laughs> if you let it be. And so I try not to let it, you know, take over my life. So I, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at on twyla.ifbb pro. And I probably post three times a week at the most, it's maybe, and maybe four, depending on what I'm doing. But, and I hardly ever get on it on weekends because I'm golfing every weekend. I mean, we played 36 holes last Sunday and, Well, that's great. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for being on the show and best of luck to you and all your future endeavors. Okay. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Well, that's our show for today, folks. If you enjoyed today's episode, please tell your friends and please consider subscribing and giving us a five-star review. All the show notes and much more are available at our website at silver-edge.com. That's silver-edge.com. So until next time, stay strong.